There's always more work to do, so let's lift up our fellow beer lovers, beer experts, beer makers, educators, and everyone who shares an admiration for beer. To reflect is to learn, and to project is to create the future that we want. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to All Beer Inside Quarantine Editions of the episode. Joining us this week, we have Addie, also known as the Beer Banterer on Instagram. Hey, how's it going? Good, yourself. Thank you very much for taking time out of your schedule to speak with us today. We appreciate more than anything people who are willing to speak with us about uh, their love of craft beer. Yeah, oh, I love Zoom meetings. So, perfect. Uh, <laughs> what we do is we're going to share a virtual beer because the show is about craft beer. Uh, let my audience know what you're drinking. Okay, so today I have a double palms. Beautiful here. So this is from a brewery up in Hamilton, Ontario. The the brewery itself opened, I think, about 2017. Um, it's a, a couple that owns and operates it. And uh, one of the co-owners, she does all of the artwork. So I just think all of their branding is absolutely fantastic. So this is a double IPA with pineapple, mango, and lactose. So it is a lot going on in there, but it is beautiful looking. Yeah, it sounds and looks beautiful. Yeah, I and it have smells one amazing. of my few remaining. Uh, since I'm Quebec, I have one of my few remaining Ontario beers. Since we're not supposed to travel between provinces right now, lovely. I have from Great Lakes Brewing oh. Haze Mama. It is a New England IPA coming in at seven percent ABV. That's um, classic. I've had a bunch of their New Englands before, so I look forward to it. And as That's we do on the show, great. we'll do a virtual toast. Hell yeah. A toast. Cling. <laughs> I was going to say clink as well. I, I, I try and do it with the pen, but it doesn't, it, full glass doesn't work. Yeah. I think mine was better. Perfect. <laughs> awesome. Uh, so what's the beer story? We'll get, what, uh, what started your craft beer Instagram journey? Okay. I mean, okay. So my beer story goes back to university timeline. Um, I didn't really grow up with, you know, OE or buying a six pack. I'm from a very small town, but even hanging out around a bonfire, I was always drinking whiskey or rum and it was never really a beer thing for me. So in university, I ended up actually doing a study abroad in London, England. And one of my girlfriends and I obviously went out one night, we were exploring, having a good time. We, um, bumped into a club promoter and he gave us two vouchers just for a free drink to go to a club and we're like why not so we get there and we had two options one was a beer and one was a shot of something pink in a random looking bottle so me not being a beer drinker I was like well maybe I should go for like the weird pink thing but that's not the safest you know situation to find yourself in so I got the beer we both did it was a Stella and I mean just the environment and the situation I was in it was so memorable but it was my first beer that I'd ever had drinking to full capacity so it was a really great experience and I think that was really the start of my love for both travel and for beer in general so that's kind of how it originated and then when we kind of switch gears here and think a little bit further down the line not too far though um, and kind of look at the craft beer scene. It all started at the LCBO. So not as a shopper though. So for everyone who's not from Ontario, the LCBO, the Liquor Control Board of Ontario, used to be the only place along with a beer store that you could actually buy beer. Um, so I wasn't shopping there. I actually worked there uh, in my last year of university uh, and for a little bit before I started the job that I have now. So just working there, I mean, you get so much experience just stocking the shelves. And obviously, you're going to read up you know, all the labels, look at all the cool products. But the beer was always so fascinating because it was ever-changing. And what I loved so much about um, the beer was that we'd have so many beer reps come in and try and, you know, sell the products and get into the shelves. And just listening to them was obviously so engaging. They are in love with what they do. That has never changed in my experience. So that was definitely my start. I think in the craft beer scene and then just, you know, leaving at the end of a shift, you'd bring a couple home and then you just fell in love with it. And it definitely pushed me to explore like going to pubs and looking at all the different really funky, cool taps that they have. Yeah. That was another reason I was like, how do you say no to like an angry looking squirrel that's just glaring at you? You're like, I definitely want to try that beer. <laughs> yeah, no, I I'm the same way. It's like, 
uh, I was I was sold. What, one of the early craft beers I had from uh, during uh, what we have here in Montreal is the uh, Mondial. Uh, so it's the World Beer Festival uh, in, in Quebec, uh, at least the Quebec version or the Montreal version. There's one in Brazil and there's one somewhere in Europe. I can't remember where else. Uh, but I remember just the name. Somebody had Yellow Snow IPA. I'm like, that's hilarious. Oh my I gosh. have to drink it. <laughs> so, uh, And that's where... I mean, outside of the first couple of like strawberry blondes you have here and there, it's yeah, that's where like my crap, my personal crap beer, uh, beer journey began was at the World Beer Festival when it was like beer can have flavor. Yeah, I but love so it so much of it too. Yeah. And I mean, if you think about like I love an IPA, it's probably one of my favorites. And you know what you're drinking is pineapple or mango or pine, and it's all coming from a hop from a plant. It's not mm-hmm. even necessarily the actual fruit of of what you're tasting so it's just it's so fascinating to me and i mean there's never ending innovation in in beer in craft beer so it's it's just not a boring industry to be fascinated and obsessed with yeah we'll, we'll definitely mention some of those uh like i said pre-show i love doing my research on the people i'm speaking <laughs> to so we'll talk about the articles you've written a uh, little thrown in here and there to the show but uh, i'd like to know do you remember those first couple of craft beers like those very specific craft beers that are like this is what I'm drinking from now on. I love this stuff. Yeah. So again, it was definitely the IPAs. I remember um, the the bottle version of the beer that I was in love with bone shaker. It's such a classic Amsterdam. There's such good stuff. They're so creative and you know, their branding is also spectacular. And then every time I go to a bar, I was, I needed to have a juicy ass, Uh, obviously from flying monkeys. You're very familiar with that, but another really great IPA. And I just gravitated towards those. Um, But then I found innocent gun and they have a, a variety of so many really good beers. So they're classic is so good it's so yummy it's a really nice multi sweet beer that you can get into and it's kind of a nice ease into the industry if you're looking to kind of get started yeah. definitely recommend that but then they have so many unique releases that have kind of come out spontaneously or seasonally and it's actually pretty tricky to get your hands on them sometimes so when you find them you're just like yes like yeah. i win i win craft beer right now <laughs> Uh, I uh, I remember having my first innocent gun. It wasn't the original lager. It was another beer. And I was just like, oh, my God, I have to try them all. We can't really often get them here. So whenever I get to travel to Ontario, uh, I'm in Montreal. So it's a hop, skip and a jump literally yeah, to Ontario. Uh, it's like, OK, let's buy every single new innocent gun and <laughs> all these new craft beers I've never tried before. And oh, I spent three hundred dollars. Oops. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm, it's so worth it, though. Yeah. I, it. I've been able to really justify it. I've been working on that for the past year, but you know, it's great. <laughs> it's just great. If it's your joy, it's so worth it. Yeah, no, it's fantastic. And I love, uh, everybody in Ontario is so lucky to get beer deliveries. Uh, yes, I was going to bring that up and I didn't want to like throw a wrench into yeah, your yeah. <laughs> life right now, but yeah. that's actually a really cool <laughs> kind of transition and, and pivot that we've seen over the last year. Like I just said, the LCBO and the beer store were really the only option a couple of years ago. Then we, you know, the grocery store started having it, but I think the pandemic has really kind of forced in a really good way. It's definitely a silver line to have the breweries in Ontario, you know, pivot and perfect that e-commerce aspect really been a game changer. I have ordered from so many different breweries. I hardly go to the LCBO anymore. And I mean, in a perfect world as a brewery, your beer is everywhere, of course, but I definitely think that it's so, it's so great that, that this kind of happened. Yeah, yeah, you're lucky. I mean, you even kind of put a Instagram story together of your beer deliveries. Uh, so I checked that out and I'm <laughs> yeah. like, well, I'm super jealous. Uh, <laughs> so, I mean, at least the breweries are still open here in Quebec. We can pre-order in a sense. Uh, and we do have beer delivery stores uh, in Quebec. Uh, so the ones I use are Cheers or Boutique Cheers. Oh, cool. Uh, yeah, uh, primarily because they deliver within my region. Um where I live, there is a beer store called Malt A Hops, so Malt and Hops in English. Uh, and I just go from there. They only allow three people in the store at a time. So I feel safe. I just wear my mask and I buy my beer. So. That's perfect. Yeah. I mean, yeah, whatever they can do to kind of make it available for people, I mm. think is a win-win situation. So yeah. that sounds great. Uh, so when you were creating your Instagram, uh, why Addy the Beer banter or just beer banter? Why not like something like, you know, blonde girl likes beer or uh, (laughs) Toronto girl likes beer or anything like that. Yeah. So, I mean, 
at the beginning of creating my Instagram, I mean, the whole thing kind of came about when I became obsessed with craft beer and I was using just my regular Instagram account to my personal one. And I just kept adding whatever beers I was drinking in my stories and having a highlight reel. And it just got to like, I don't know, 50 highlights in, in one reel. And you're like, no one really wants to look at that. No one's really going to go back and be like, what was she drinking three years ago? No one cares. And I didn't know if, you know, the audience I have on my personal account is really going to be interested in that either. So I was like, like, where can I put this? I want it to be somewhere. I want this to be something that I continue doing. And um, I did take um, a course, the George Brown Beer One course, just at the beginning of 2020. And so that, I mean, just increased my infatuation for it and my desire to be like, I want a place to put all of these beers that I'm forced to be trying in a very good way, of course. Um, so I just started the account. Honestly, it just was a more recent thing. I started it in December and um, I wanted it to be a little bit different. Obviously, there's so many really cool Instagrams out there that are super unique and, you know, uh, girls who do their makeup to match the beer cans or their nails or there's some kind of cool tech aspect to it. There's so many different iterations of what your account is about. And so I love facts. I love research. I actually work at a trend research firm during the day. <laughs> so I just wanted to kind of combine those things. I just have so much random knowledge about beer and I mean, everything else really. So I wanted to put together an account that basically has great pictures of beer, or decent pictures of, I'm not going to toot my own horn, <laughs> decent pictures of beer that I really enjoy. Um, and I wanted to give tasting notes. So I obviously don't have a rating. I'm sure you've noticed. I don't, it's not my place to yeah. rate beer. Yeah. It's a craft. It is an art. I mean, someone made that and it is a beautiful thing just because it's not my cup of tea doesn't mean it's not someone else's. So I'm just very honest about what it tastes like. I'm sure it'll help someone decide later on, but along with the picture and the tasting notes, I have a random fact with every single post that I do. Yeah, I was, I was actually going to ask. Uh, we'll, we'll get into that uh, right now. Uh, what what kind of like made you decide to to add, well, one, add that random fact, but oh, what I love, I, I think it's it's super fun. Uh, the eyeballs, the nose, <laughs> the tongue, and the lips for basically, you know, look, the nose, the taste, and uh, the mouthfeel, I'm assuming? Yes, yes, that's uh, exactly what, it. What kind of made you like, this is fun, this is me, yeah. like, it, it, was that where that came from? Okay, so when I was taking the beer one course, you know, with my beer guru, Jordan St. John, we were doing a bunch of tasting and we'd always go through those four main criteria. And so that's how I've always been taught. That's how I know how to uh, write things down. That's how I know to take notes. I have a million notebooks around me right now, just filled with look, smell, taste. And so I wanted to put that into my into my actual Instagram to really provide education about the beer itself. So, I mean, who doesn't like a good emoji? It's a universal symbol. Everyone kind of knows what you're talking about because it's just more fun than writing a word. And I think that a lot of, even just the names of the beers, there's an emoji for a lot of them. So I always will add those in there too. Just, I just think it looks more appealing. I enjoy it. So that's bare minimum. The main reason I do it is because I like doing it, but you know, if you just, if you don't have the emojis, if you remove those completely and it just says like, dang, pineapple, blah, blah, blah. It's like, okay, does it look like that? Does it smell like that? Does it taste like that? Like, where is this going? And yeah, I just think it's better than writing out a whole word like mouth. <laughs> just look at a mouth. Yeah, mouthfeel. No, I, I think it's fantastic. I never, I, I've never seen that on any other. I mean, I only follow like 500 Instagram accounts, mostly beer, so... I, I haven't seen that anywhere else. Uh, and I see like your pictures are pretty fantastic. I, I wouldn't have any complaints about them whatsoever. You stick predominantly to the beer. You do have an occasional like self photo and stuff like that to uh, draw in uh, people as well. Uh, I like the, the variety uh, that you have in your photos. So yeah, it, it's not stand like my own personal photos. I got nothing special going on. I try and take a picture of the beer have as little of my television in the background unless I'm doing my <laughs> beer and horror movies uh, pictures. Um, that's, that's a cool idea. I love yeah, that. I see yes. your account. I like your account. It's so, good. That's, um, but I, I'm, a, I'm a little older and I do work full time. So I don't have, you know, you're a trendsetter or trends. In, I'm not going to butcher that. You're, you're developing trends in your job. <laughs> yeah, it's called Trend Hunter. Yeah, and you can very easily obviously bring that over to your Instagram. So that's that's where you do actually have the time is 
I'm working on this. So it goes right yeah. to it. Whereas so, I'm yeah. not working in any Instagram or video world whatsoever. <laughs> so. Yeah. Yeah. It's a balancing act. Right. Yeah. Um, and just to your earlier point about the just beer banter, I originally wasn't going to have my face at all on my account. So I wasn't going to have any selfies, but <laughs> my mom of all people was like, no, honey, you're, you're so cute and blonde. Like you, people are going to want to see your face. And I'm like, you would say that, of course you have to say that, but I mean, it's actually kind of nice because I, I do like accounts where one day I'm going to want to meet everyone that I have on Instagram and it would be nice if they kind of know what they're looking into. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, no, 100%. I, you know, most of my pictures of my face are in my stories. Uh, you know, it's yeah. either my, the shout outs to other accounts or, you know, I'm a Green Bay Packers fan. So when the football was going on, it's a picture there of my cheese go. head. So that, that's, that's me. Uh, like I said, for some reason, as the show promoter, I'm the face, even though my other friend could do just as well uh, physically looking. So that's that's me. <laughs> yeah. uh, so uh, like I said earlier on, I love doing my research now. I, I Thankfully, I had a chance to read your Reflect projects. Thank you. Um, I love your passion, your optimism of how we have a craft beer for all future. Uh, what made you decide like my words need to come out. People have to hear my voice uh, about where I see craft beer was and where I could see it going. And when it comes to obviously black uh, or BIPOC, uh, women, uh, queer and local love, like what, yeah. what made you decide those four factors as four individual articles? And uh, for those who are, are watching, uh, super easy read through. Honestly, you're not like looking at an hour out of your day. It's a five minute read. Go do it. So. Yeah. 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 Thank you so much for reading those. So it, it kind of came out of my Instagram to, to be quite honest. So I actually don't write trends anymore for uh, my, my firm. I'm more of a consultant there. Um, but you know, when I started writing the facts and, and you'll definitely see on my beer account, a lot of the beers that I have are supporting different causes. So like I said, you could read a fact about, you know, a hot variety or an artist that created the label, for example, of the beer, but you also have um, beers that are uh, from Indigenous Brew Day. So I have the Wellington Celebrating Sisters and uh, that is a fact that I want to share. That's the, that is the core, you know, epitome of, you know, what that beer really represents. So that's going to be the fact that's paired with that beer. Uh, for International Women's Day, I have a couple beers on there, one's from Collective Arts, and I just wanted to share a couple of facts about International Women's Day and promote that kind of angle. Um, so when I started the beer account, I wanted to do something more than just pictures and facts, and I thought that the articles really paired well with it. And this is going to sound kind of funny, but I was trying to figure out a creative way to take a photograph. And there is obviously a, just a full length mirror in my room. And I was like, that could be interesting. And so I put a beer in front of it. It didn't work out well. It looked really silly. But out of that weird little, you know, attempt to create a photograph, I was like, this could actually be a really cool project. And so the actual title of the project is called Project Reflect. Mm -hmm. So it's about looking back to think ahead. So a lot of people say it's, you know, the reflect project it's actually reflect project so just a different emphasis and i love being able to talk about and share that aspect it just kind of draws people in but i really wanted to start a, just small and just see if it was interesting to other people because it was so interesting to me and when i started my beer account i just realized how massive the industry was and <clears throat> how much it impacts you know, everyone's lives who is part of it. But, you know, more importantly, there are so many passionate people who are part of the queer brewing community who don't get the recognition that they deserve, who haven't been seen as, you know, as important or as equal. And the same with the Black brewing community. Uh, obviously, I just mentioned the International Women's Day. So focusing on women in the, in the beer and brewing industry, I wanted to focus on them as well. And the last one was, of course, just focusing on local love. And I think the themes in the last one can really apply to anywhere you are, any place you're located. It doesn't have to be Toronto, but I am in Toronto, so I focus on that. And there's such a rich history here of beer and so many fun facts that just come out of it. So, yeah, it's a very important read. Like you said, it's not going to take very long. It's also really fun and informative and kind of in like a kitschy way in, in an aspect because, you know, it's my way of sharing a hugely important 
issues that are you know necessary to bring to light in a more I think approachable manner because obviously a lot of people are super uncomfortable talking about a lot of the issues that I've brought to light but you don't have to necessarily kind of learn know everything about I think that for me it was a kind of just an outlet um, and a way of corral my thoughts into one avenue so instead of trying to think about how you know the black community at large is being affected by everything and, and how this has been going on for so long and you know we need to raise our voices well we absolutely do and this is my way of raising my voice in a way that I feel very comfortable doing in a way that I feel you know okay to talk about it because this is stuff that I know about I know that there's so much more that I need to learn yeah. but here are some facts that I know um, just from being part of the beer community and from learning from the people that I know in the beer community, um, black brewers specifically, but it, it's about more than just brewers or, or breweries. It's about writers. It's about educators. It's about everyone who's part of the beer scene in any form, photographers, um, you know, pot farmers, really anybody. And so I really want it to be all encompassing really. And like I said, there's more to learn, but I always end all of my, um, I guess, articles. There's only four of them. So I end them all with, there's always more work to do. So let's lift up our fellow beer lovers, beer experts, beer makers, educators, and everyone who shares an admiration for beer. To reflect is to learn and to project is to create the future that we want. So it seems pretty simple to me to just say those words, but I think that you know, putting them down and putting them out there in the universe is a huge step in the right direction. And little can go so far. So any, every little bit helps, the support helps, the education helps everything, you know, one foot in front of the other, but we've all got a part to play in this. And, and I think that this is where I kind of fit into that. Yeah. And it's continually educating people uh, as well. What I like is on the bottom, uh, you, you shout out fellow accounts uh, through listen, read and watch. Yes. Uh, which is very, very, uh, very forward facing as well. When you're like, here's the people who know more than I do. Go, go pay attention to them. I've just given yeah. you a little bit to work with. Uh, go do more. <laughs> uh, what I did like in the, uh, the second part, the women in beer was the whole like Mesopotamia and the yeah. goddess of beer and stuff. Cause uh, I'm, I'm a self-professed, you know, uh, geek jock. I, I do have my geek side, but I am a weekend warrior when I can be. Um, <laughs> And so I remember reading the comic book history of beer and the whole mention of of the goddesses of beer and stuff. And then it, it brought it to mind again. And I'm like, oh, my God, that's yeah. awesome. So, <laughs> yeah. And, yeah. And just, and it's so important to look back. It, it really is. And, and really just realize where this actually yeah. comes from. It, it's from such a unique place. And then it's it can really be part of such a positive future. So that's definitely why I love it and I also pair all of my articles with one beer um so that's why it's kind of connected to the Instagram I do have one beer just you know in a, one aspect it kind of relates directly to the topic so definitely go check it out you know like we said they're not long reads so yeah. let me know what you think <laughs> yeah I know they're fantastic and I see they're associated to your LinkedIn so anybody who wants uh he's looking for you know a trend consultant there you go <laughs> <Hey>. <laughs> Uh, I'd like to get your idea of stunt beers in general. I don't know if you've heard there's a Buffalo wing sauce beer oh, in the States. There's a ranch beer. Uh, there's a Fruity Pebbles beer called Yabba Dabba. Like, That's cool. What are kind of your thoughts on on the stunt beer? Um, so I get this question a lot. I get kind of the, the seasonal question a lot from, you know, the clients that I work with, especially flavor or food and beverage clients. Um I think that if you are looking to build an audience, it's not a bad place to start. I think if you have an existing really core loyal foundation of an audience, it's not a bad thing to do either in, in kind of a fun um, marketing, you know, playful way. I think that those beers are definitely going to be appealing, but in such a small quantity, I don't think anyone is going to be, you know, try a ranch beer, a ranch dressing beer specifically, <laughs> and be like, that is my new go-to forever. I will drink this every day or, or every time I get that opportunity to have a beer, this is the one I'm going to drink. I don't think they have longevity, but I definitely think they have a really fun place in the industry. I think that um, the other side to this coin is to just, you know, get your name out there, 
people are going to buy it. They're going to remember it for, for real. Um, so that's great. And then exactly. And then the next time that you see that same brand in the future, maybe with something a little bit more low key or mellow or, you know, approachable, you're probably going to at least consider buying it because, you know, you, you recognize it and they made something funny in the past. It, everyone likes comedy. Sure. Um, but another aspect of this, there's so many aspects, there's so many ways to think about this. Um, but it, there could actually be a really good tasting note in there that kind of, you know, through all the clutter, let's say, uh, really stands out and could actually be something. So if you think about like a ranch dressing and maybe there's like a creamy aspect from the yeah. oat flakes that you're using and, and it was something new that the brewery tried and, and they really want to stick to that sort of texture maybe they learn something and they can just kind of swap out some different flavors um but I, I definitely think that they're cool they're interesting they're fun they may be not they are innovative they're, they're definitely thinking outside the box but they might not be something that really sticks yeah so so for you, I, I don't think I've ever asked this question. Uh, where does a beer end and more or less like an alcoholized beverage begin, do you find? Good question. That line is continuously blurring right now. I mean, there, <laughs> there are so many iterations. And even when you think about just the way that a beer is is titled, or even if you think about the salt, the hard seltzer industry, People are calling them hard soda waters, hard seltzers. There's so many different names for these different products that are on the shelf. So it's definitely getting cluttered. And I think that's actually adding so much confusion to not just the industry itself, but to consumers. They don't even know what they like anymore because they don't know what they're actually consuming. Yeah. So I think it's important for like any beer to have a cool name. That's definitely important. You know, there's definitely inspiration for the beer. So give it a fun, catchy name, but the actual style of the beer, I think, should always be included on the can or or in the marketing aspect of it, because, you know, the basics of lagers, nails, perfect or different. But if you know what you're drinking and that's a way you can tell what you're going to like next time, that's great. I don't think we need to get super convoluted and say, you know, this is a malt beer beverage or a carbonated malt beverage. It's just or so, there's so many other words that you can kind of swap in and out and, you know, open up that sothoris when you're thinking up your marketing campaign and it's honestly might not be the best move and I'm not apologetic about that it's probably not the best move you don't want to confuse people it's just going to make them sound weird when they're talking about the beer that they (laughs) like and it's gonna you know kind of misalign the brand loyalty right (laughs) because then you're going to go further and be like what is that actually saying to me on the beer can or what is this beverage really gonna do more research maybe you're not gonna like what you thought <laughs> so just be blunt I love being blunt and just be honest so yeah there, there's a lot the lines are blurring and it's getting a little bit confused and there's so many hybrid beers as well out there now so are you drinking a cider is it a beer mm-hmm. those I don't I don't hate so much but um, I know that it can get a little bit confusing for people who aren't super adventurous or they're trying to be and then they just end up with something they don't really love so it's definitely a, it's tricky uh, one thing I wanted to mention on, on this kind of stunt beers is uh, some craft breweries are starting to make craft sodas. What are your thoughts on that? Oh, I I love it. I actually really do. Um, so my sister and also AKA my roommate, she is a huge just soda water drinker. She loves it. So whenever I make an order, I always add in whatever the brewery is kind of making. I love the incorporation of the hops. I love, I love that they're pivoting. And I, I think that at the beginning of this year, I haven't really noticed it so heavily in the past, the um, the kind of dry Jan, dry Feb, whatever you choose to do. Obviously, it's existed. I just haven't really super paid attention to it. It's not something I'm interested in, in pursuing or, or living through, but that's totally fine for everyone else. And I think that it also, you know, really gave breweries and even cideries the opportunity to still provide something really fun so they have a non-alcoholic beer that's great but i think that actually providing those those soda waters is really cool and i think it's just another use for the ingredients they already have um it's definitely something new again i think it's a really great trend to be honest and uh, for someone who doesn't necessarily like beer it's a really great kind of option for them and great for mixing like you can't really go wrong you can have it during the day you can have it on a patio you know with your with your tequila if you are so inclined why not um but yeah I love it I think they're really great there has been a couple of really good ones that I have gotten for my sister um Dominion City had 
they always have, I think, some different kinds of rotations, but they have some really great flavors. Um, Bellwoods has a bunch of really lovely flavors as well. Spearhead has their aqua uh, water. So there's, there's literally so many that I can't yeah. reel them all off, but I love it. Bottom line. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so... Uh... Between pen, uh, between waves, uh, I spoke with uh, I we interviewed Ian with Wiper Snapper, and he said it best. I find is, uh, Daddy gets a beer and the boy or daughter gets a root beer, so it looks like I'm drinking what Daddy's drinking. Right. So I I think that's great. Um, I had the two craft sodas. Yeah, I had the two craft sodas from Castle. Uh, one of the best ginger ales I've ever had. It. So it's, uh, yeah. it's great. I love it too. I, I'm a big fan of, like I said, support local. I don't want to buy Coca-Cola. I'll go buy these guys. So yeah, absolutely. And yeah, bubbly is good. Carbonation is good. Or yeah. like if you're able to support local by doing that, I think it's a, such a great initiative. Yeah. It's fantastic. Uh, so we're mentioning your Instagram and we're mentioning trends. Obviously breweries know Instagram is the way to go when they have <laughs> their social media people, they reach out to, uh, influencers like yourself and other uh, accounts. Um, when it comes to that, could you see yourself collabing with a brewery to make the the beer banter or beer? Ooh. <laughs> so this is actually really funny to actually make a beer. I've never brewed. I'm not a home brewer. But like I mentioned a little bit earlier, Jordan St. John, he was on the pod. Um, he obviously created the entire course of uh, at George Brown. So there is three courses essentially to the beer specialist program. So beer one, beer two, and then the complex beer and pairing course. Um, I'm currently in the last one. So wish me luck finalizing that. <laughs> but in beer two, um, so I did beer one. IRL, fantastic. And, and then I started beer two, again, IRL, and then the pandemic hit and that really shut everything down, especially schools, you know, for super obvious reasons. Yes. And, you know, if it had been a, a real, you know, in-class course, we would have actually collaborated as a class to create a recipe for a beer and go to Toronto Brewing and actually make the beer. So I was so jazzed about that. I was so excited to be like, how do these big machines, because I've done brewery tours, I've done distillery tours, I've seen the equipment, I want to use it. <laughs> so um, I was excited about that. And then we couldn't fulfill that, which is totally understandable. And so I ended up signing up for the virtual course, Beer 2, and kind of our final assignment was to create a beer recipe. So I did, and I actually kind of loved the idea of the project. I thought of so many different beers that I wanted to create myself, things that I wanted to try, things that I liked, um, things that I wanted to kind of emulate or, or bring back to life. And so I could definitely see myself attempting to make a beer with a brewery. I think collaborations are really fun. I can definitely provide a lot of the, you know, copy for that. A lot of the facts really bring in that aspect of what is trending right now. So yeah, I bring a lot to the table except for the actual scientific part of it. <laughs> that I have no idea what I'm doing, but I definitely think that it would be a really cool experience. And one day I definitely want to learn yeah. in real life how the broom process actually works you can only learn so much from a computer or a book or a video so I, I definitely want to get the real experience eventually uh so you're in the gta you have uh i mean I, i've obviously been to the gta but let's say i'm blind to the gta mm -hmm. what are like the top five places that you're like here are five places you need to go to they're awesome in toronto it's so hard. This is so hard to even think about and consider because it depends on what you like. It depends on what mood you're in. It depends on, you know, what your vibe is. Um, but there are a couple, obviously I have so many recommendations. So if you are in love with an IPA, if you love something really hoppy, you've got to go to Bandit Brewery. So they have a stunning patio, of course, the summertime and, you know, social distancing is super okay there. That's fantastic. Um, definitely recommend them. They also do delivery in Toronto and other places if you're here. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> um, so that's definitely, you know, one of my top records. I've been there so many times. So it's a really nice spot that I would keep returning to. So I'm obviously going to promote that. Um, you know, if you're by the water, Amsterdam is a, another really great place to go to. They have such a solid selection of beers. They have a massive indoor um, dining area, a really cool bar. They have a nice patio as well. If it's, again, in the summertime, you're by the water. Fantastic. Um, you know, Blood Brothers, they 
kind of don't do anything bad. <laughs> They're really good at everything they do. It's, it's, it's shocking how good they are at making everything from, you know, your fruited ales to your IPAs and sours. And, you know, there's always something new. They're also a brewery that does a ton of collaborations, which I, I love uh, seeing that. I love when, when breweries come together. So that's another huge reco. Um, Bellwoods, I mean, that is a classic in Toronto. If you're just kind of in the area, Again, if it's summer, grab even in some uh, spring or, or fall, grab a couple at their bar shop and, and go to Trinity Bellwoods. Uh, I'm not promoting outdoor drinking, but I am. And that's always a, a great place to hit up. Um, there's so many, like in my direct vicinity, like Henderson's is here. Um, you know, Junction Craft Brewery is is pretty close. Um, Halo Brewery, they're they're pretty small, but they have such amazing beers. This is another great place to kind of go grab a couple and hit the road but they are off the chain when it comes to those uh ipas again they also do some really really unique uh wine kind of wine-esque ipas which is fantastic i mean burdock is a really cool place to go to as well and in my opinion when i last time i went there it's just a little bit more it feels a little bit more elegant <laughs> however you want to interpret that it's just a, a really cool place they have really great food um as well if you're looking for that uh, when you're out and about but those are a couple of my top breweries um a lot of the beer that i have on my instagram though is local um i've done a couple orders from from breweries in ottawa and i definitely want to continue broadening that but check out some of the the, the, the beer on my uh beer account they are a lot of local breweries and and anything in Toronto. I haven't had a bad experience. So really lucky. Uh, I meant to ask you earlier uh, on, uh, so you are doing the, those beer courses with the, the George Brown college. Uh, yeah. Do you, self, you see yourself doing the either beer judge or Prudhomme or Cicerone at any point? Well, that was the original goal um, was to eventually take one of or all of the above. And I think I'm really on that trajectory. I, I want to, I think it's just going to elevate everything. I have learned so much in the beer courses that I have taken. And obviously Jordan is fantastic, really knows his stuff, really dry sense of humor. Um, but <laughs> gotta love him. Um, but he has really kind of, I think, opened up the, the beer world for me in so many different ways. So, so appreciative of the, of the courses that I have taken and, it really is just a motivation to just keep going because why not? Like you said, you have a bunch of books. I have a bunch of books. Learning is endless in the, in this industry. And I'm sure with every truly, but it's so fascinating and I'm obviously really passionate about it. And so I want to, I want to keep going and I want to continue. And I don't necessarily know which one is next. Do you have any reco? Who would you? <laughs> after oh, uh, no, I just, uh, I have, I have what's called the consumer palette, I believe, uh, which is, Hey, this tastes good. Cool. I think my friends would like it. <laughs> Um, I'd love to do, cause I know the BJCP is kind of like, you could do the test from the book type of thing. Uh, yeah. so I could see myself doing that as your customer BJCP, not your yeah. like high end craft beer bro guy. Uh, I'm more of a, this beer is good. Uh, like it's very rare. I love English bitters, just the maltiness and the caramel. Really? Uh, yeah, it's, mm -hmm. it's so rare. And, and when I find a good one, um, there's a local brewery here for Origins or Cat Origin in French. Um, they make an English brown ale. It's called the Crumpet. Almost any night, Ooh. I'll I'll go there first and I'll try something new, unless it's yeah. like extremely crazy. Like they made this super good Belgian. So I'm like, okay, mm -hmm. well, I can't like go from this nine percent Belgian down to a five percent brown <laughs> ale. It's just not going to happen. Uh, but their brown ale is almost designed like an English bitter. So I'll go to the brew. I'll go to the brew pub when we could. We'll play some Uno with friends, and I'll be pounding those five percent beers all night because nice. they're fantastic. So that sounds like a great night, to yeah. be honest. Yeah, I, I desperately miss those nights. I know, so. I know. <laughs> They'll be back. Like I said, optimism. Yep. Uh, yes. You know, you had that early optimism. I have optimism as well. Uh, <laughs> and I always mention to uh, any of the women I interview, just women are naturally better tasters. Uh, it's it's a genetic. It's genetics. You you have a better palate than I probably do. So. The other thing with that, I didn't think I did. Uh, you don't really know what you remember and kind of your your sensory memory. Um, I quit smoking because of this, which is saying a lot about <laughs> my passion for beer, I think. But let's just keep going with that. But I, I have, you know, kind of found a little bit of a difference. And 
I love kind of schooling my, my siblings uh, on what I'm drinking and what we're all tasting together. I mean, like, don't you taste this, guys? It's kind of like a real just buzzkill, but it's fine. Yeah. I mean, everybody's different. Uh, I have a friend who loves the entertaining value of whenever we have a smoked beer, he's like, this is like a campfire I'm drinking. I'm like, <laughs> I agree. If we could drink campfires, this is what this bottle of beer is. Yeah, I or, love that. Uh, one of the ultimate comments ever on our audio podcast was, this beer tastes like I'm getting a hug from my dead grandfather. Oh my God, I, that is so cute and creepy. It was really nice. <laughs> we're like, And then we have it and we're like, it is. It's that yeah. like... <laughs> it's got that Werther's original smell and oh, we're yeah, just like yeah, oh my yeah. god I can't believe you said this I That's think it was like Innocent Gun original lager where we're just like that actually makes the sense. maltiness and stuff we're like oh my god <laughs> that's exactly what it's supposed to be so awesome uh, okay so I usually any interviews on this obviously we all want to go on vacation again when it's safe when uh, it's safe to get in that cylindrical tube of recycled air and not have to wear a mask for hours on end a uh, couple of beercations you'd love to go on. Uh, I add this new caveat. Uh, there's two. Uh, one where very much uh, I have a job and I have to go back to it at some point and I don't want to be declared bankruptcy at the end. <laughs> and then two where I won the Lotto Max. I have $50 million to spend. Let's go. Let's have some fun. Yep. I love it. I love that question. I mean, I, you, I get, I'm daydreaming all the time about when that is going to be possible, where I'm going, what I'm doing, who I'm with, what I'm drinking. It's a really great way to waste an afternoon. Um, so kind of the way we kicked off this interview, actually talking about my beer story. Obviously, I love traveling. It all started in London, England. Um, I have been really you know, blessed to be able to travel a lot over the past, since then, really. That was my first kind of across the pond adventure. And I've been back a lot ever since then. So um I've actually had the pleasure of taking off a couple different kind of beer trips or, or beer, I guess, locations that you want to experience when you go places. So I have done the Heineken experience in Amsterdam. I have been to the Guinness Storehouse in Ireland. I've been to tenants in Scotland. And I um, <laughs> went to Germany uh, last year, or I guess a year and a half ago. Uh, I was in Berlin when I went, though, and it was amazing. I love Berlin. Definitely want to go back there. Um, and I did like a little pub crawl. But the one thing that I know that I need to do and I had plans to do was, of course, Oktoberfest. That is just, it's the classic. It's the big beer hoopla if you want or if you will <laughs> and so I definitely know that I want to go and I want to experience that I know it's a completely different place than than Berlin but I think that just you know I had such a great time in Germany and I can only imagine it would just be amplified at a massive festival dedicated to beer stuffing my face full of pretzels and then of course doing some touristy stuff afterwards visiting and, and hiking and it's so beautiful there so that I definitely want to do um I actually was gifted recently this book. Oh. <laughs> the beer bucket list, and it has over 150 essential beer experiences from around the world. So, as if I needed another 150 ways to spend my money, <laughs> there it is. Um, so, it's definitely being helpful. But the Instagram as well, I'm just, I'm all over the place. I can't pick one. I want to go to Australia and New Zealand. I have been following a variety of uh, really cool. Um, beer enthusiasts on instagram and a couple hop farmers in new zealand so i can i just kind of like i have this picture in my head where i get to visit a hop farm in new zealand and then just be on like the countryside and all the beautiful scenery and kind of go a little hub hub hopping hop hub hopping um so i think that would be really fun i've never been so that would be totally fantastic dreamy if you will there's one uh place in australia if i ever go it's called kaiju beer all their designs are like cute little like Godzilla's and Cthulhu's and, and King Kong. So uh, just the fact of, of for the can art, I'd be like, oh, yes, these are all I'll drink all these beers and I'll send the cans back because that'll be much cheaper than actually transporting the beers back to Canada. Yeah, so, I love that. Yeah. That's really cool. And that's kind of your like your your ultimate unlimited money is the uh, Australia New Zealand. Oktoberfest. Okay. to start that's where i would start but okay. i mean i would have to continue hopping around to different places in europe um yeah. i have not seen everything in ireland i only 
I've only been there once. Uh, and I basically rented a car with my siblings. Actually, we did like the perimeter and obviously hit a few key areas. And it was such a great time. But we weren't there for beer. And I was like, what a missed opportunity that was. So I have to basically go back to Scotland, Ireland, um, not like the core of London, but definitely somewhere in that area. I want to go to Liverpool and kind of places like on the outskirts of London and, and explore there. Just never ending Europe vacations is my true dream, desire, <laughs> my, my heart's desire. Uh, I, I burn for Europe. So that is what I would have to do and how all that money would be spent super wisely, of course. Um, but yeah, and I would have to bring, you know, probably my siblings because they're my, they're my best beer buddies. Um, <laughs> Fantastic. Uh, now, you didn't mention anything in like uh, the rest of Canada or North America. Are there like some spots that are, are must hit places for you, you think? Okay, so if we want to limit this, uh, I've been to BC once for about 24 hours, like crazy. Um, it was a silly work trip and I had to <laughs> flight, you know, the next day to Dubai. It's so unfortunate. Um, <laughs> again, it was a whole work thing, but I wasn't there long. But when I was, I got to just kind of see the forest and the water and basically like the beach all in like one area. And I was like, this is so crazy. And um, I have a couple friends that live in BC and obviously I need to go back there and experience the beer. There's so much really cool and, and so innovative breweries down there. So I would love to do that, but I mean, that flight could literally be the cost of going to Europe. So it's not going to be a budget friendly trip. So if we're trying to stick to a budget, um, definitely want to explore my own backyard a little bit more. I was kind of thinking about, you know, like a road trip adventure. I've always wanted to take some kind of road trip, maybe not across all of Canada, but I, I kind of want to head up actually towards you a little bit. So heading up towards uh, Kingston, I would have to make a stop in uh, All or Nothing, which is a brewery just outside of Toronto. They make so many such good beers. It is just such a fun uh, brewery as well. Their their branding, I think you would appreciate if you haven't seen it. Definitely check it out. Yeah. Um, heading up that way, I would have to stop in Kingston. It's where my mom lives. So I'd say hi to her real quick. Go to Spearhead. Um, I've tried so many Spearheads. My mom is a huge fan. She always has a stock when I go home. Um, Daft Brewery, I've never actually been, but um, I, one of my girlfriends lives there and she is obsessed with her sour. So yeah, to try we, those. Were, we were actually supposed to interview them just uh, before the third wave started. Uh, so that that was a kick in the, uh, yeah, the man area. Uh, there's that I had a full because Kingston's only three hours for either of us realistically yeah. Uh, yeah. so I had a full weekend book I have vacation uh, from works like hey you have vacation last year I'm like yeah because I couldn't go anywhere yeah uh, I know. It's so over. I'm like okay we'll do like uh, myself or my videographer and I are like we'll do a full like five days in Kingston uh, it's super cheap right now the hotels are only like 80 bucks a night yep. perfect and then it's like Hey, dude, we're canceling. We're not going to Kingston. I'm not getting COVID. It's not happening. So I hate that for you so much, but yeah. you will be there again. There's so much to look forward to, right? There, yeah. There's so much. Yeah. Uh, this has been awesome. I have no other questions for you today. I really appreciate you uh, talking with me today. Uh, so all I want you to say is how can people find you? Yeah, so my Instagram is really where I live and breathe. It's where all my facts live and breathe. If you are interested in reading the articles that we talked about here, it's actually in the link in my bio. So it is at Just Beer Banter on Instagram. And uh, look out for Tuesdays. I do a trivia on my Instagram stories. They're a ton of fun. People get upset. People feel really smart. So we'll see where you fall. But please uh, check me out on Instagram. And this has been such a pleasure. Thank you for having me. No. And I thank you once again uh, for letting me speak with you. Um, as for us, it's at, uh, well, everything that she's mentioned will be in the show notes. So just click on them on the bottom of the YouTube uh, channel or when this comes out in the strictly audio format on allbeerinside.com. Check that out. As for the show, it's at All Beer Inside everywhere. Uh, literally there's nothing else different if you'd like to follow myself it's at killer carpe diem uh, that's everywhere as well uh, those are with case and as i say at the end of all episodes drink craft not crap